So when you think of TypeScript support in your JavaScript runtime, say Bun or Node or Dino, what does that entail? Does that entail running your TypeScript code? Sure. Does that include checking your TypeScript types to make sure that they're valid? Well, as it turns out, only one of those three runtimes has that built in. We'll find out which one that is by the end of this video. But I got to tell you, there's a lot of buzz around this because Node 22.6 is out and it has support for TypeScript, which is great until you kind of dig into the fine details. Take a look. So here are the release notes for Node 22.6. And as we can see, experimental TypeScript support via strip types. And that's actually great that they're telling you exactly what that support means. They're not hiding behind any kind of TypeScript support. They're basically saying what we're going to do to your TypeScript is we're just going to strip out all of the types and then run it as JavaScript. And that's one of the things you can do with TypeScript because that's the guarantee that TypeScript is always given. If you just remove all of the types from a TypeScript file, it's just JavaScript. It's nothing more than just adding type annotations. So that's what you can do. So let's see how this slide works in Node 22.6 and TypeScript checking, see how that's going to go. Also check out Bun and Dino and see what kind of TypeScript support they have as well as other utilities. And by the end, you'll have a good lay of the land about how to use TypeScript in your projects. So let's get right into it. All right, let's go over to our command line. And for those playing the home game, I'm now on Kitty as opposed to iTerm. Apparently that's a big thing to people, but I think it's a great one. So go and check out Kitty. It's open source and it's awesome. So I'm going to take a look at what node version I've got. I've got 22.6. So this is the one that has our experimental strip tag. So let's go and create ourselves a file. I'll bring it up in VS Code. And now I'm just going to define a string. And before you get on me, yes, I know that the string there is superfluous. I'm using it there to make a point about stripping types. Let's just go and console log that out. All right, now let's go and try this in Node. All right, so it's finding that there's a syntax error. Now let's try it with the experimental strip types. And there you go. It runs. Cool. But look what also runs. So I go back in here and I say, blah, 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 which is clearly not right. And I get my red squigglies in VS Code because it isn't right. I can try that out again. And yeah, that works too, no problem, because it's not actually checking the types. All it's going to do is just as it's reading through the files and parsing through all the tokens and tokenizing it as compilers do, it's actually just going to just ignore any of the type annotations. Anytime you say interface or type or add generics, or in this case, just specify types, it's just going to strip that out and you'll be left with JavaScript and the JavaScript will run. So you're not actually getting any guarantee of type checking, which is kind of what you'd expect when you want to run a TS file. So how do we add in type checking? Well, traditionally you use TSC, the TypeScript compiler. So we can do TSC test.ts, and that will actually give us the error that we're looking for. But it also, if we look in that same directory, now we've got a JS file. So, uh, well, what do we don't want that JS file? Well, let's get rid of that. What we can do is we can do no emit and then test.ts. That'll again do that checking, but we won't get the JS file. So good. So you can pair that with that node experimental strip types and then run it. And that gives you the type checking that you're looking for. And because I'm using the and and there, if the first command fails, which in this case it does because the type checking failed, the shell won't run the next command, which, which would be the node that would then runs it. So let's try it again, this time in a good form. And it runs just fine, of course, with a little bit of warning on there because we got that new flag, but it runs fine and compiles fine. Now, if you don't want to run it on the command line all the time, let's go and create ourselves a TS config file and go into our Visual Studio code. We can look for that no emit flag and then we can enable no emit. And now weirdly, when I do the same TSE test.ts, I do get a local JS file still. Let's get rid of that. But when I don't actually add a file and I just let it find the files, then it works. But of course, let me check for any issues. 
And there you go. Cool. <laughs> Not sure why we get that little issue there where it doesn't check the TS config if you give it a file, but it does if you don't. Kind of weird, but there you go. All right, let's try it again with bun. Of course, we have some invalid TS code here. Let's try it. And it runs just fine. So it's doing the same type of stripping and no checking. This is a known thing. So as you can see in the bun docs, similar to other build tools, bun does not type check the files. Use TSC, the official type script CLI, if you're looking to catch static type errors, which I think you are if you're using TypeScript. All right, let's go check out what Dino does. And this time, again, we are broken. So let's give it a try. And it runs just fine, again, because it's not doing any type checking. Now, hopefully, the Dino docs actually go into a lot of detail when it comes to this. But wait a minute, does Dino really run TypeScript? You might be asking yourself, well, it depends on what you mean by run. So again, in this case... We are not doing the static type checking, but we can do Dino check and then test.ts. And that actually does run the checking. So Dino of these three is the only one that has TypeScript support, both in terms of stripping and also in checking built into it. Now, that's not the only way to run it. You can do Dino run dash dash check test.ts, and that will run the check before it runs the code. The reason that you get this switch is that you sometimes don't actually want to go and do the TypeScript checking. The reason being, if you've done the check once and you haven't changed the code, you really shouldn't ever have to do the check again. So you don't want it to go and do that check on every single run. That's why you get the option here. And just like Node, you can pair TSC with either Bun or with Dino, although I think in the case of Dino, it's kind of duplicative because Dino actually has the checking built in. You just have to enable it. There's also two other ways to run TS that I'm aware of. There is... TS node. So after you install both TypeScript and TS node, you can then just use TS node and give it your script file. Let's give that a try. All right, looks good. It caught my error and <laughs> gave a huge error report. Let's try it out when it's good. All right, runs just fine. There's also TSX. Let's start with TSX in a good form, TSX, and then test.ts. That runs fine. Let's start in a bad form. And it still runs fine. So it turns out if you want to do type checking, you also have to go and integrate TSC with TSX. So a little bit of gotcha there. That honestly was a little bit of a surprise to me. I've been using TSX a lot lately, and I didn't know it was checking, but apparently I've been depending mostly on the red squigglies in VS Code. If any of this is right or wrong, be sure to put that in the comments right down below. I would love to hear your take on all of this TypeScript stuff. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.